Good evening. Good evening. It is 7 o'clock and I'm here by call our Forney ISD Board of Trustees meeting to order. I'm Greg Ferris, President of the Board, and I do certify quorum as President and the meeting has been posted in the time and manner according to the law. The monthly meetings are open to the public. Although those meetings are public, comments and questions from the audience will be confined to the time designated for citizens to address the Board. Thank you all for being here tonight. First, I'd like to thank Miss Belle Huggins back there in the very back. She was our pianist this evening. She's a fourth grader at Blackburn Elementary. Let's give her a hand. Thank you, Belle. <laughs> our Fine Arts Director, Mr. Mario Luna, will give her a certificate for being with us now. So thank you again, Belle. Moving on to our next item then will be our uh, invocation and our welcome. At this time, we'd like to ask Jeremy Prather to come to the microphone. He's the campus pastor for Lake Point Church in Forney, and he'll be leading us in our prayer. And we are so proud to have you and Lake Point as a community partner. So let's all rise for the invocation. Good evening, everyone. You know what I love about this room right here and all this that's out here is it is the perfect picture of a healthy community, right? It's like Forney ISD has the culture of being known for empowering others, and that's what we're seeing tonight. And so like, when we see that, man, we see people's strengths rise up, and uh, new leaders emerge, and we need that as a community. We got churches in here, we got families. Thank you for being here. It's a big deal, not just for your students, but for all of us, and it inspires all of us. So to the board, thank you. Uh, John Maxwell says, uh, man, leaders aren't great because of their power, but it's because of how they empower others. Let's bless tonight. Come on. God, we thank you that you are so good. We thank you for life. We thank you that you have designed us to, to work. You've given us bodies, and we are to have a purpose. And so, Father, tonight we just invite you in. We ask that you uh, govern our, our conversations and you direct our plans and uh, Father, your word says that we can make plans. In fact, the heart of man is to make plans, but it's you who directs our steps. And so we invite you to do just that tonight. Uh, would you speak? Would you move? Would you, uh, would you just visit? And so tonight, Father, we ask you to take our plans and to bless them, to change them, and, uh, and just have your way. It's all for your glory and for the good of your people, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yep. Moving, you may be seated. Next in our agenda, well, we would like to ask some of our principals to come forward. Ms. Judith Willis, principal at Brown Middle School, will introduce our secondary student of the month. Following that, Angela Malone will be our principal at Claven Elementary, will introduce our elementary student of the month. Good evening and thank you, Dr. Terry, President Ferris, board members and guests. It is my privilege to introduce our secondary student of the month, Ms. Kylie Saltzman. She is an eighth grader at Brown Middle School. Kylie is joined tonight by her father, Mr. Michael Saltzman, and brother Ryland, who is a sophomore at Forney High School. When we were given this opportunity to honor a student, Kylie immediately came to mind. One of her teachers stated it well by saying, Kylie is one of the nicest girls in all of my classes. She always puts forth 110% in everything she does and goes the extra mile in whatever she is working on. She strives for excellence in her work and behavior. If she doesn't complete an assignment perfectly, she works hard to correct her mistakes. Kylie is humble and serves others by helping out at her church by working with younger children. I've never seen her be rude or disrespectful to adults or to her peers. She always comes to class with a smile and a positive attitude. She is a joy to know and a pleasure to be around. I, I spoke with Kylie and asked her what motivates her to be successful in school. She said it honestly began with her dad as early as first grade paying her to get good grades. <laughs> <laughs> and then she realized that if, you, if I can do really good in school, why not do it? You have to work hard to see your full potential, is what she told me. 
Kylie's goal is to go to college and become a counselor for children and families. She believes that's a good choice for her because she likes helping people. One of our campus counselors described Kylie as a shining beacon of positivity on our campus. He said, whenever I see her interacting with other students, she has a smile on her face and is always willing to assist others. I believe that Kylie exemplifies our Forney ISD values and I know she will continue to be successful. We are so proud of Kylie and the positive impact she has on our campus and our district. Ms. Kylie Saltzman. Good evening, Fortnite 40 ISD board and members of the cabinet. Uh, tonight, I would like to present to you our student of the month for Clayman Elementary, fourth grader Cutler Arden. Uh, this evening, he's accompanied by his parents, Misty and Daniel Arden, and his sister Carly, who will also be um, acknowledged here tonight. Um, in addition, some of our Clayman staff is here to support Cutler with this amazing acknowledgement. Uh, Cutler has attended uh, Claiborne since first grade, and during his time as a Claiborne Cowboy, he's made a positive impact on his peers as well as his staff. Anyone who knows Cutler only has positive things to say about him. Here's what some of the Claiborne staff and students have to say about Cutler. Cutler is not only an amazing kid, but he is an amazing person. He's the perfect combination of brilliance, athletic ability, and above all, gentleness. On a daily basis, Cutler exudes patience, respect, grace, and kindness. In addition, he goes above and beyond to welcome all children in and outside of the classroom. Cutler's kind heart loves to give attention to the students in our ABLE and our life skills units. He always does this with a smile on his face. Cutler is a student that goes above and beyond to make sure that his peers' needs are taken care of before his own. For example, he will make sure that his teammates have a turn before the activities uh, before him. When faced with situations that challenge him, Cutler gives his best effort with a positive attitude. When he's not in school, Cutler loves playing select baseball, where he has, uh, where he has a passion for both the shortstop and pitching positions. He's an amazing player, yet he is humble about his talents and his skills. As you can see, Cutler is a well-rounded young man, an incredible human being. He exemplifies the characteristics of a Claiborne Cowboy. Cutler, Car uh, Cutler Arden was selected to represent Claiborne Elementary because he exemplifies our Claiborne Foundations and our energy bus rules on a daily basis. He demonstrates the same drive in everything he does and everywhere he goes, whether he's in the classroom or the ball field or with his family and friends. We are so excited to see the impact Cutler makes in this world. He is truly a special young man. If you could please rise as these students lead us in our pledges. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. <laughs>
Thank you, students. Now, as you look around the room here, there's a lot of people here and they didn't come to see me. So we're gonna move on to some recognitions. At this time, I'll turn the microphone on to Kristen Zastapool, who is our uh, Director of Communications. Uh, good evening. I am so excited to come and share with you about Angel Tree this year um, in partnership with the Forney Lions Club. Um, last year we served about 850 children. Uh, this year we served over 1,230 students and 444 families within our community. Um, I wish I knew the history of how long the Lions Club has been hosting the Angel Tree. I've heard Julia tell me over 30, 35 years. Um, and thankfully the district has been able to partner with them for the last several years uh, to, to make sure we are serving as many families as possible. So before I call up our Lions to recognize them with the Forney Family Award, we have a really quick little highlight video to show you how much fun we have, but also how much joy it is. So, oh, I guess that took my slide out. Um, so we just want to say thank you to the Lions Club for letting us be a part of this tradition that they've held for so long. So this evening we have several Lions with us. Uh, PDG Julia Johnson, if you'll come forward. Uh, Lion Don Orman, Lion Brendan Hirschman, Lion Renee Lee, Lion Sonia Bannister, Lion Lynn Spencer, and there were several others that helped us that evening uh, over the course of four evenings actually to make this a reality for our families um, and the Lions Club have done a tremendous job for our community and helped us serve so many families so we are so excited to present them with the Forney Family Award. Dr. Terry, school board, the Forney Family Award goes to people or organizations that represent the very best of our Forney community. As a long-term partner with the district, Community Life Church has continued to impact the lives of students and staff this school year. This year, they chose to adopt three schools, Claiborne, Willett, and Rhodes. They've also played a key role in our principals and pastors meeting, which is key to connecting our schools, our nonprofits, and our churches all together for the best of our community. Not only have they done all this, but as part of the Lions Club Angel Tree, they adopted 150 students as part of the Angel Tree program this year. This level of commitment, hard work, and investment is why I present to you tonight the Community Life Church for the January 23 Forney Family Award. As we continue in our recognitions, we're going to move on to student recognitions. At this time, uh, turn it over to Ms. Sassipool. Are you continuing? Oh, we're switching gears here. Okay. Ms. Jenny Glanton, if you'll uh, share with us your recognitions. Good evening. The Forney ISD Fine Arts Department is proud to share the recent accomplish accomplishments of our middle school and high school thespians. Our theater students recently competed in the Texas Thespian State Festival and Thespie Contest, or the EDTA International Thespian Excellence Awards. 
EDTA is an outgrowth of the International Thespian Society, and this is the on only theater honorary kind for theater and middle, uh, middle school and high school students. Since 1929, ITS and its troops have affirmed the quality of affiliated theater programs, bringing credibility and distinction to both students and schools. Texas Thespians is an affiliate of the Educational Theater Association and includes num numerous branches which offer multiple opportunities to Texas theater educators and middle school and high school students throughout the state. Students may enter various thespi competitions at the Texas Thespian State Festival in areas such as solo musical, group musical, group acting, etc. We are delighted to share that our FISD thespians received the following honors at the Texas Thespian State Festival and thespi competition. Earning superior awards, Maya Thomas, Monologue. Peyton Bailey, Solo Musical. Caden Loudermilk, Solo Musical. London Crawford and Chidiogo Anobule from North Forney High School. Congratulations, students. From Forney High School, Rita Farouk, short film. Keller Hemmick, monologue. Catherine Denning, solo musical. Aaron Rosales, solo musical. Lucas Sanders, solo musical. Sierra Sandy and Mariah Romero, duet acting. Major White and Mackenzie Boyles, duet acting. And congratulations to our tech team. Forney High School earned first place in the state with the fastest individual cable relay in the tech challenge. Congratulations, students. <laughs> Warren Middle School Theater, Caitlin Cooksey, State All-Star Award, first place outstanding troupe group musical theater lip sync. Caitlin Cooksey, Story Wyatt, Katie Rose Holman, Madison Armstrong, Aurel Peregrine, Saray Reed, Carrington Lida, Ava Tony, Jayalani Sigra, Bella Gorney, Isabella Baez, and Mackenzie Scott, group musical. These students have received a superior pin from Texas Thespians, feedback from a panel of judges, and are qualified to perform again at the Educational Theater Association's nat national conference, should they wish. Congratulations to our Thespians. We are extremely proud of your hard work and dedication to your theatrical craft. The FISD Fine Arts Department is proud to share the recent accomplishments of our middle school and high school cheer teams. Our cheer teams recently competed in the National Cheerleader Association State of Texas Championship. Warren Middle School Cheer, this team earned first place in their division. They also earned the Technical Excellence Award and Best Use of Props Award. Congratulations, students. The Forney High School cheer team earned third place in the 5A division at the National Cheerleader Association State of Texas Championship.
congratulations to these students and their cheer coaches. Thank you, Ms. Glanton. Next should be Mr. Neil Weaver, Athletic Director, coming to recognize some of our athletes. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Members of the board, Dr. Terry, it's always a pleasure to recognize the great student athletes and coaches in our district. Uh, in this case, we're recognizing Texas High School Coaches Association academic all-state members. We'll begin with Forney High School and North Forney water polo. This is a brand new sport in our district. This was our inaugural season. So this is a first recognition for this sport. I'll invite Coach Callie Orozco, our head coach for both schools this year to come up to the front and she'll help us welcome our Texas High School Coach Association academic all-state winners. For Forney water polo, we have Ty Wright and Jaslyn Lomax and in North Forney Water Polo, Emily Huff. I don't believe water polo national championships on tonight. Next recognition is football. <laughs> Jeff Fleener for Forney High School football. If you join us at the front tonight and help us recognize our Forney High School, Texas High School Association, academic, all state award winners. Our members of this team, James Alms, Ian Henson, Blake Farrow, Caden Lovell, Kyle Bricker, Lewis Cannon, Christian Baker, Jaden Wise, and Peyton Negri. Last but certainly not least, Coach Eric Luster, man in the sweater, and his North Forney Academic All-State Award winners. Now I will say, Academic All-State, these guys are scholars, but they've all also, water polo, Forney football, North Forney football, they've all um, held a 92 or above grade point average. Uh, they also take into account their SAT and H ACT scores. They have to be members of the team in high moral standing and be a significant contributing member. These folks are Luke Key, Gustavo Rubio Jr., Byron Golden Jr., and Kendall Sanders. Next, Mr. Mario Luna, the Director of Fine Arts, to share exciting recognition. Mr. Ferris, Dr. Terry, School Board, thank you so much for this, this time. Um, we are recognizing, as you see up here, the 2022 um, Percussive Arts Society International Convention uh, performers. Uh, there is three um, high school groups that are selected in the United States, and technically this is an international competition, so really internationally. Um, but I mean, this is a, a super big, 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 big deal. Um, what P PASIC is, is one of the largest drum and percussion events in the world. It features um, concerts, clinics, panels, presen presentations um, by the finest artists all over the world. So um, we're just gonna ask their directors to come up first, and Mr. Riley Warren. And Mr. Shannon Jacobs. So, um, with Mr. Warren, he's he's been with us now six years. Um, 
and to add to that, he actually just completed his uh, master's degree at SMU recently, so congrats there. <laughs> and then uh, next to him is uh, Shannon Jacobs. He is a, uh, our lesson teacher, but um, as many of in the room might know, he's, he's been here almost 20 years. So he's really kind of, oh, yes, clap, <laughs> there, there you go, clap. <laughs> so, um, He's um, the lesson teacher, so pretty much he helps all the kids and all that. I've got something for these two first, and then we'll bring all the kids up. So here, Dr. Terry. So what this is is a, a photo of the kids. Um, we did this last year for North 42, and um, the selections that uh, were performed in uh, in Annapolis. So at this time, um, we ask all the Forney High School percussionists to come up here. <laughs> and the, um, yeah, we're gonna take a group picture, so just uh, the tall ones in the back, so JT in the back. So this um, photo that you see up here was taken before the concert because uh, when they performed Thursday, um, I was with them. I mean, it was uh, standing room only, which for a Thursday concert at Pasek is a pretty big deal. There was 412 seats because I counted every single one. And um, I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was very neat. Um, this also took place during marching season. So if you know about marching season, um, So, as we take this picture, I'll, I'll keep talking here so we can save some time. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, this took, took place in November, um, right after a state marching contest, so they pretty much were doing two jobs at once. Um, the, the concert season, I mean, super busy with this uh, performance, and then uh, marching season, so. I think we're good. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, congrats, congrats, congrats. Moving on to item C, next I'd like to ask Ms. Kristen Zaspel to come to the microphone for recognition. This will be a scholarship recognition. We're going to introduce. Right. Here. Uh, yes. Um, yes, we have a, a per someone here with us tonight to help present this scholarship <laughs> award. Um, Mr. Kyle G Gliet, let me pronounce that correctly, from the Texas Association of School Boards is here this evening with us, I believe. Oh, he's at the podium. Perfect. <laughs> here I am. Um, my audience is gone, so I'm going to have to really wow you guys. Um, no. Good evening, Dr. Terry, ladies and gentlemen of the Board of Trustees. Thank you all for having me. Um, it's my pleasure to be here with, with you. My name is Kyle Gullett, um, and I'm with TASB. Um, I have the joy of supporting Forney, um, ISD, and other districts in the North Texas area region by lessening the burden of government regarding facilities. 
uh, bond planning services through our TASB electricity program, our fixed fuel program, and uh, as well as the buy board purchasing cooperative. Um, tonight, I'm here to celebrate with you, your community, which isn't here and out there now, um, <laughs> and your administration, um, a $1,000 scholarship that FISD um, won as a result of a random drawing uh, at the 2022 delegate assembly at the TASA TASB conf uh, conference last fall. Um, for those who don't know, delegate assembly is a conversion of uh, district representatives across the state of Texas to discuss grassroots initiatives um, that will ultimately become topics to advocate for at Capitol Hill in Austin. Um, so this scholarship was given to 10 districts across the state who were in attendance at the delegate, uh, delegate assembly and four in the ISD was one of the 10. So. Uh, the district can award this scholarship to any deserving student. I'm sure there are plenty right in this little foyer here uh, that it wishes to. Um, and I, we hope that it can offer financial assistance as well as recognition of the student's future needs and ambitions. So on behalf of TASB, I want to present this scholarship check for $1,000 to uh, Forney ISD. And also thank you for your participation in Delegate Assembly. And hopefully we'll see you in the fall of 2023. Thank you guys so much. Um, and I will move on to school board recognition month while you guys are, are getting settled. Um, by state proclamation, each January is officially school board recognition month in Texas. We are so thankful for each of you who give of your time and your talents voluntarily to serve our staff, students, and community. This year, we thought we'd have a little bit of fun, so we traveled to some of our elementary campuses and asked our students all kinds of questions about what is a school board and what does the school board do? So here's what they had to say. What is a school board member? I don't know. <laughs> what in the work world? The board that's in a school? I think it was like a mascot. I don't know, but I think I, but, but I think they're like a janitor that or like like yeah, like a janitor. A school board member is somebody who helps out people, they give ideas for new things to do during school hours and that stuff. What does a school board member do? Go to people and help them if they need help. I think they like protect the school and I feel like they're the ones that call the police. I think they really help out a lot and that our school wouldn't really be running very smoothly without school board members. They, they like help clean up messes, like help like, like if somebody accidentally makes a big mess, they could just clean it up. Because they protect everybody in the whole wide world. What do they do at school board meetings? Well, then I think they talk about kids and what their grades are and all that boring stuff. I think they have meetings. Talk about children who need help or that are struggling in class that we can help out. Um, talk about things that they could do. Do you want to be a school board member when you grow up? I think it's going to be awesome to be a school board member. Well, I have, I have like a lot of like jobs I'm thinking of for, for like everything so I don't think I can do it and I think and if I'm and I'm thinking of all the jobs I could ever think of yeah so yeah thank you 
Thank you. Thank you. We keep you the same for serving our Forney family. For helping us succeed. Thank you for putting students first. For supporting us. For looking out for us. Thank you for cleaning up our messes. For all we do. Thank you from the bottom of our heart. Thank you for being the one. Uh, so not all of our students know exactly what you do, but we're trying to tell them as we go to campuses and we know what you do and that you give a lot of your time to us and we just want to say thank you. So tonight we have posters from our campuses on display, special notes from students along with crumble cookies at your seat. We also have a special framed keepsake to thank each of you for being the one. And we also, um, uh, for being the one in Sargon District, our student floral designers from Blooms are also here this evening to present you with a fresh arrangement as I call each of your names. Henderson and Jackson provided notes for board member Katrina Burkhalter. Johnson and Warren provided notes for board member Barbara Jo Green. Criswell, Ray, and Blackburn provided notes for Vice President Chad Johnson. <laughs> Claiborne, Willett, and Forney High provided notes for President Greg Ferris. <laughs> Crosby, Smith, and Forney Learning Academy provided notes for Secretary Becky Dobbs. Griffin, Brown, and Rhodes provided notes for board member Hannah Bateman. And Lewis and North Forney provided notes for board member Scott Regan. And thank you to Mr. Honeycutt and our Bloom students for coming this evening and bringing the arrangements. Moving on to our next item will be our staff recognition. I think Ms. Leslie Rader is coming to the microphone. <laughs> Wonderful. 
All right, thank you school board for providing this opportunity uh, to celebrate the successes of the FACT program. It's hard to believe um, that it's just, it was just over a year ago that the innovative idea that Dr. Terry had regarding the teacher shortage uh, was presented to the school board. And tonight we're here to celebrate the very first graduate uh, to earn her bachelor's degree. Uh, before we do that, one of our critical partners with this program, uh, Dr. Carson Castleman is with us. He is the vice president of student engagement at Indiana Wesleyan University. And he wants to speak to the board and the audience about the success of this program, not only in Fort ISD, but across the state of Texas. Dr. Castleman. Thank you. It is great to be here, and we do want to thank you. And Kate, we want to give great success to you, what you've done in a very short time. You've accomplished a lot. But we want you to know that the Forney uh, team is phenomenal, and they have really been the catalyst. You and the board have been a catalyst to bring this across the state of Texas and now at Indiana Wesleyan we have close to 300 Texas teachers going through this program. So we want you to know we thank you for that but most importantly we want you to know that the students that you entrust to us we will embrace them and we help them and through character scholarship and leadership and we will do whatever we can to help them be successful. Thanks again for all that you do. All right, at this time, our coordinator of professional learning, Shelby Denman, she really runs the day in and day out uh, programming of the of fact with our candidates. Uh, we'll come forward to celebrate, again, our very first graduate, Kate Massengill. All right, well, thank, thank you. So we're here tonight to recognize Kate, that's the video, no. We're here to recognize Kate Massengill. Uh, Ms. Massengill is a teacher intern at Crosby Elementary in kindergarten. She was accepted into the FACT program last January, so about a year ago, as one of the first cohort members in the EQUIP track. Since that time, she's completed 30 hours of college-level credit through Indiana Wesleyan University and an additional 15 hours of college-level credit here in Forney ISD through our Forney core courses offered as part of the FACT program. Those hours, in conjunction with the hours that she transferred in, have enabled her to complete the degree requirements to obtain a Bachelor's of, in a bachelor's of Science degree in Integrative Studies through Indiana Wesleyan University. She graduated on December 17th, and as Leslie mentioned, she is our program's first graduate. So we're proud of her hard work, and it is with great joy that we recognize her accomplishments this evening. Thank you all for your patience. That was a lot of fun celebrating a lot of people for a lot of accomplishments. Um, at this time, we're going to move on then to item number six, our reports. 
Next four items for reports only require no action. First will be uh, item 6A, monthly financial report, Mr. John Chase. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. You know, it, it always seems uh, so unfair to, to have to deliver the finance report after all this uh, good, exciting stuff that we just saw tonight, but uh, I'll give it a shot here. But uh, in your board book, there was uh, uh, the finance report for the month of November 2022 was uh, presented for your review. Uh, the highlights of that report, just to start off with, in the general fund, uh, revenues year to date collected was 44.2 million, and this is 29% of the amount estimated. And for comparative purposes, in the prior year, we had 31% uh, collected at this point. So pretty well on track in, in revenue uh, collection in the general fund to date. Moving on to expenditures in the general fund year to date is 72.9 million, uh, and that's 44% of the amount appropriated. And in prior year, the comparison, we had 41% uh, 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 of the amount uh, spent at that point. And as we dis uh, discussed in prior board meetings, the primary difference in the variance is there it, it related to capital outlay and, and the timing with which we spent it from and the amount we appropriated last year versus the amount of capital outlay that we appropriated in the current year. So pretty well on track, uh, again, on, on the uh, expenditures in the general fund. Uh, moving on to food service, uh, year-to-date revenue collected was $2.7 million. Uh, now this was 42% of the amount uh, estimated in the food service fund, uh, and that kind of breaks down into 1.2 million was collected from students for uh, our plate lunches or a la carte sales, and, and, and the other uh, 1.4 million was uh, federal reimbursements through the uh, free lunch and breakfast uh, program. Uh, now we did serve uh, 103,000 meals uh, in November, uh, our plate lunch lines uh, to, to the students. Uh, and, and, it, and again, that's pretty well uh, on track as far as uh, the number of percent, percentage wise of what we served in, uh, in the prior months. Um, for comparative purposes, uh, uh, you know, we collected 44% uh, of our uh, estimate last year at the same point in time, so pretty well on track as far as revenues. Uh, year to date expenditures in the food service fund uh, is $2.4 million. Uh, this is 38% of the amount uh, uh, appropriated. And for, again, prior year for comparison, we were at 31%. Uh, there's pretty significant variance here, and again, uh, we've talked about this in prior months, but the last, I would say, three years, starting in, in the 1920 school year, we were going through uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic, uh, and that had a significant impact on you know, our food service operation. And if you go back to the 1819 school year, which was the last uh, year where we had normal food service operation, uh, comparatively, I think we were at 36 percent uh, expended at that point, so pretty well on track in the general fund. Uh, expenditures uh, in a normal year of operation. And finally, in the debt service uh, fund, the revenue year to date collected was 2.3 million. That's 5% uh, of the uh, estimate, estimated revenue. Uh, we'll have some significant revenue collections for the month of December and January. Uh, that's when our, we get our really heavy tax collections and that's pr primarily what funds the, the debt service fund. And so we'll, we'll look to see a lot more uh, collections in the, in the next couple months uh, when we present that report. Uh, for prior year comparative purposes, uh, we were 7% collected at the same point in time. And then on the expenditure side, year to date, we've spent uh, 20.6 million, and that's 60% of the amount appropriated. And for, in the prior year, we were at 67%. And if you go back to last year, we, we actually were able to pay off $6 million in bonds uh, uh, early, and this year we did $4 million. And so that $2, $2 million differential basically represents what that 7% difference in, in uh, Exp expenditures of our appropriations, um, but pretty well on track in our in our debt service fund. Uh, no, nothing really uh, that we didn't expect here. And finally, in our uh, our, our year-to-date cash and investments uh, in our general fund, food service, debt service, capital projects combined, we've we've got four hundred and forty-seven million dollars uh, in the bank, or did have, and uh, most of the which was our, in our capital project funds at three hundred three hundred seventy-five million. So. That's the finance report. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Chase. I hear now. I appreciate your time this evening. Next is our uh, board self-evaluation, and I would just like to thank each of you for sharing those uh, evaluations with us. We had 100% of participation from the board. The general consensus was unanimous across the board as well, so I appreciate your support and your positivity and your comments there. That is what Dr. Terry and I use. It helps us with our planning our goals and our directions for the year, but we do thank you for your support and your comments to help us in that self-evaluation. Moving on to item C. 
a semi-annual district update. Uh, Mr. Weber, Dr. Weber. Just to parents and school board members, it's always an honor to stand before you uh, twice a year and do this because I represent really the whole team. And it, it takes the whole team to accomplish all the things we've accomplished. We do have a short video, and I want you to kind of think of it as a highlight video from an entire season of some sport event because there's no way to really capture everything that we've accomplished in the last six months. But we have done a lot of great things uh, uh, with Dr. Terry's leadership. So we've got a little video to show you, and we'll have some questions. Happy New Year. It's time to look back at what we've accomplished over the last six months and look forward to what's ahead in 2023. As always, we are working hard to ensure our projects align with our board goals and district values. We have several construction projects underway. The OC, the ninth grade centers, transportation and Dewberry are all in full swing. We have begun our trainer of trainers program for Ed Qualis and have a great kickoff meeting with our team. The Virtual Academy is serving over 100 students currently with the possibility of expansion. We've launched Vivi, the only wireless screen mirroring and digital signage tool designed for education, and many of our classroom teachers are enjoying the benefits of this new technology. The 22-23 approved compensation plan was availed early in the spring to help with recruitment. For the last seven years, we've averaged over a 3.5% raise for teachers. To ensure high quality recruitment and retention of district personnel, we added a coordinator of recruitment and retention to our human resources leadership team. Forney ISD submitted an application for the Texas Clean School Bus Program, sponsored by the Texas Commission of Environmental Quality. The grant funding is to replace or retrofit school buses to help reduce children's exposure to diesel exhaust in and around diesel-fueled school buses. We are excited to share that we have received the grant in the amount of $369,000 towards purchasing five newer, cleaner models. The Forney ISD Police Department is growing alongside our district. In addition to adding officers, our officers were ahead of state mandates, completing all required emergency operations and safety team requirements ahead of schedule. We've also conducted summer targeted safety audits and exterior door safety audits, along with convening our safety and security committee to review our multi-hazard emergency operations plan and active threat plan. The district ended the 2022 fiscal year in a strong financial position. Our unassigned fund balance was $37.3 million, or three and a half months of operating expenses. The district's credit rating, as determined by standard importers, is an A+, due in large part to our strong general fund balance. The district was able to repay $4.1 million in bonds earlier than scheduled in fiscal year 2022. This early redemption allowed the district to avoid $3.7 million in future interest expense. For the ninth consecutive year, the district received an A rating from the Financial Integrity Rating System of Texas. The district was able to increase retention pay from 1% to 2% in the fiscal year 2023, while also contributing an additional $600 towards defraying the cost of health care expenses. For the fifth year in a row, our community partners have helped us provide school supplies and backpacks for families needing assistance. Our Forney family continued the annual Pack the Pantry campaign, collecting over 12,000 items for our local food pantry, and partnered with the Lions Club to provide Christmas presents to over 1,200 children through the Angel Tree program. The communications team received a National School Public Relations Association Goal and Achievement Award for the Forney family campaign. This year, we will be offering two district cohorts, Aspiring Administrators and Master Teacher. These will run from January 23 to December 23. Participants will complete an aligned extension activity to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of the monthly focus, as well as a professional learning portfolio that demonstrates application of goals. The Teacher Incentive Allotment is an initiative designed to help recruit and retain the best possible teachers to reward those who work in the campuses of highest need. Last summer, Forney ISD submitted a TIA application and was accepted into the TIA Cohort E beginning with the school year 2022-2023.
Our plan for the first year of implementation includes math teachers in grades 1 and 2, math and language arts teachers in grades 3 through 8, and English 1, English 2, and Algebra 1 teachers. The learning team provided Reading Academy support for over 300 participants. All kinder through third grade teachers and administrators are required to complete the academy by June of 2023. For the start of 2022-2023 school year, we have continued to expand our Future Ready curriculum to include kindergarten through second grade math and English 1 and 2. The FRCs provide teachers with a daily teach piece along with the supporting student activities and assessments. And the Advanced Academic and Fine Arts Academy has been expanded to all grades kindergarten through fourth grade. We are planning to expand the academy into Smith Intermediate next by offering expanded fine arts opportunities along with academic enrichment. We've implemented Culture of Excellence Specialist at each campus to provide campus support for behavioral and social supports, as well as working with all teachers to build teacher capacity. And our goals program has been expanded this year to provide alternative education settings for all of our high school students and have graduated over 20 students in the first semester. The IRL CTE principals classes have successfully completed their first semester where our 8th grade students not only gain a CTE high school credit, but also learn to build character development and feature ready skills. Blooms at Fournier ISD has hosted two evening community courses this semester and will start another successful Flower of the Month program during the second semester. The local Blooms at Fournier ISD and the Fine Arts Department collaborated to host the first annual Empty Bowls project. Our Principles of Construction classes partnered with Masonry Rocks to teach all of our students Masonry Basics. This provided them with a Masonry certification that can be utilized in their future. Forney ISD Athletics continues to lead in preparing students and coaches for impact beyond the courts and fields. Forney ISD Athletics fielded four varsity teams and completed our inaugural water polo season. Esports will have plenty of action this spring with multiple events throughout the district. Space reservations throughout the district, in addition to the community request, have increased 1,000% over the previous year. Advertising opportunities for outside organizations include space on the school marquees, signs on scoreboards, and athletic facilities. These opportunities have been widely used by area businesses, churches, and local organizations. Forney ISD is delivering the future of education with the OC. As construction continues and the metal framing of the building comes close to completion, a topping out celebration was in order. Huckabee Architects and Gallagher Construction hosted the occasion with the district. What a great first half of the 2022-2023 school year we've had. We can't wait to see what spring 23 holds and all that is to come next year. Hopefully you saw just a snippet of what each team and all the people that work with them uh, have accomplished the last uh, six months. So at this time, do you have any questions? I do have one question. When it comes to um, the compensation package that we were able to offer our educators, I know that we're sitting in a space where you know it's really hard to attract educators. Um, <coughs> so my question is, do we have a pulse on the effectiveness of the um, of what we've delivered this year and you know, if our teachers are taking advantage of some of those additional benefits, if there's other feedback that we've got from them on what else they need. Well, I can certainly let uh, Rick and, and John address this, but I do know that we do study all of the districts carefully to see how are we doing in comparison. But in terms of some of the retention and recruitment people and the pulse. Yeah, he can add to that as Rick's coming to the microphone. We're actually um, about to begin meeting with um, a teacher representative from each campus. Uh, to kind of take some feedback. I'm still in Rick's thunder, but he was walking too slow. So um, too I'll let him take it from here, but uh, he and his team are doing a great job. And Rick, you can kind of talk about Shanita too, probably. Well, yes, uh, yes, sir. Thanks, Dr. Terry. Yeah, we uh, had the opportunity, as in the video, we hired a coordinator of recruitment and retention. And so she's been reaching out to not only our staff, but to other districts and seeing, you know, just exploring creative ways, as we always do in Forney ISD, to try to recruit the best talent and so one of the things that we thought was critical is to really put together this recruitment and retention committee that we're right currently doing right now that will be meeting with the principals on Wednesday finalizing the list that very select group that's put in, been put together for this committee and then we'll be exploring ideas of how we can recruit the best talent but from some of the incentives I know for the probably had the biggest impact on some of our auxiliary staff 
because right now, and I hate to even say this, knock on wood, we're two drivers short having a full staff. So, and I really think that is due to our leadership in that department, but I know uh, Chris and talking to him and, and some of his, uh, and the facilities and the custodial department as well, is that we're seeing better, you know, people hired, better, better candidates, and we're, you know, getting to a close, more of a position that we've been in the past than what we were currently a year ago. That helps. I don't. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's always important to kind of take a look at it as we've implemented those things. The data that backs it up, the feedback from those that are the recipients, so that we can continue to look at that. Well, Dr. Allsbrooks, who was hired as our recruit, uh, coordinator of recruitment and retention, she also did is doing the state type survey, which she's sending it out to campuses to collect information about what's important. You know, why did you choose Forney? You know, what has been your experience? So she's collecting this data. Obviously, we'll share this with Cabinet probably in the next couple weeks, what her findings are. But uh, we're exploring every opportunity, reaching out, looking at stuff. Uh, Dr. Campbell's been real involved in this about reaching out to other states and trying to recruit, you know, from that as well. So we're exploring every opportunity. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Rick. And Ms. Burkhalter, just to, you, you hit on probably one of the, if not the largest challenge across our state right now. Um, that opportunity to serve on the teacher vacancy task force and then compensation was the number one uh, item that uh, is being pushed forward and that's based on feedback from not just teachers from Forney but across the state of Texas. So um, our legislators have uh, the, more money than they've ever had this year going into session and so we encourage um, any uh, and everyone to reach out to them and make sure that we advocate for additional funds for our teachers. So I can't, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't have the opportunity to just go ahead and put that out there for everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Barber. Thank you. Moving on to item D, our master planning update, Ms. Kim Morzak and her guest. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Ferris. I was frantically looking through the PowerPoint because Jeff didn't come in until really late, so I was glad to see him walk in. Um, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Mr. Fisher from Gallagher Construction. Uh, he's going to go through all of our current projects that uh, are currently on the ground. Jeff? Thank you, Ms. Morsack, and I was here just shortly after seven, but I sat outside because it was crowded. So. <laughs> um, President Ferris, Dr. Terry, members of the board, good to be with you again. I will go through our um, master planning report, the update on the current projects, just to give you an idea of where we stand on everything. First is the OC. Uh, that project is coming along very well, as uh, you can see when you drive by it, and those who were able to attend the topping out party uh, last month, uh, saw where we were in that process and we've come a lot further since then. So uh, in, in different areas of the project, we're in different places, but uh, you know, different stages. Uh, part of the building, A and F, which is the east side of the building, uh, we're uh, working on two siding sheetrock and tape embedding the walls, uh, putting tile in the corridors and uh, working on the roof. Uh, area B, which is the very front of the building, where the uh, coffee shop will be in the collaboration space. Uh, it's a smaller area, but we're working on getting the second side of sheetrock put in there. Area C and D, which is the west side of the main building. Uh, the roof is actually complete on that side. We are further along on the west side because we're working west to east, basically, on that building. Uh, two siding sheetrock in, in different areas on the different levels there. Tape and bed also, and the corridor and restroom tile is also being installed at this time. Um, area G, which is the fine arts uh, area and the storm shelter, the underground slab, uh, underground floor slab plumbing and electrical is complete. And uh, if they haven't already poured the slab, they're getting ready to very soon. So that'll be going in. Uh, the uh, tilt wall is already up, as you could see when we were out there at the topping out. So that area is coming along. Area H is the uh, ECC, Early Childhood Center. And uh, you can see we're progressing along there. The first floor wall rough in is complete. They're working on the rough end on the second floor for the plumbing and electrical. Uh, getting real close to finishing the roof. And uh, obviously working on second side of sheetrock on the first floor and, uh, and on the second floor as well. And then in the arena area, uh, we're working on getting the catwalk uh, finished up and put in and uh, working out of the north side of the building where we had to leave it open for the access for the crane. So uh, working on the smoke vault and the grade beams 
uh, on those concrete pours, and then we'll be uh, moving on with uh, erecting the rest of the miscellaneous steel that goes on that end. Dewberry Elementary School, that's uh, coming along very well. You can see by the pictures there, the uh, tilt wall for the uh, storm shelters uh, actually, I think mostly done at this point. Uh, interior framing is in process. Uh, exterior paving, the drive lanes uh, are, are being formed and setting. They're getting ready to pour concrete on those. Uh, still doing some steel erection on the second level and then uh, working again through the process on uh, just kind of around the building, different stages, but steel framing, interior framing, uh, sheetrock, and, and uh, roofing will be starting very soon on that one. That's some other pictures that you can see from Dewberry. The exterior walls, the ICF uh, is what you see in that upper picture, and then uh, the lower picture is the main entry where the concrete columns are being done. North Forney High School Freshman Center Edition. Uh, it's coming along uh, good. We are currently a little bit delayed on getting structural steel for that project in the Forney High School Freshman Center. Uh, the good news is we expect to have steel deliveries uh, beginning the end of, end of this month and early February on Forney High. Uh, so that'll get us moving a lot quicker, but we have, uh, you know, done everything we can as far as the uh, grade beams and getting the foundations ready to accept the steel. Uh, you can see in that lower picture for North Warney, the elevator shaft is done. And then in that upper picture is actually the fine arts edition, uh, which is coming along a little quicker because it's a carton form slab. So we're not having to wait on the steel on that part of it. Uh, very similar at Forney High School, you can see the, in the upper picture, the uh, elevator shaft being done it's mostly complete at this point and then uh, we're also working on the cafeteria expansion uh, on that particular project which is actually in this middle picture on this side uh, slide um, that concrete's actually poured at this point I believe so uh, we're coming along pretty well that I know the window infills classroom side are complete uh, still working on getting the brick infilled on the outside of those so that we can get that uh, little cafeteria edition closed in. And then the transportation center uh, foundations going in on it. The interior renovations are nearing completion, uh, getting pretty close on those. I believe the metal building is scheduled to be here the end of this month or the first of February, first week of February. Uh, so once that comes, that uh, project will start moving along a lot faster. Again, we were kind of at the mercy of the metal building delivery on how fast that project could go. And then uh, two slides that we don't have are Warren Middle School and Teamer Middle School. Uh, apologize for not having those slides in here. Not much to see. There's a little bit of, or a lot of dirt moving around on Teamer and uh, some dirt moving around at Warren plus demolition of the paving, but that's about as far as we've gotten. Uh, on both of those projects, we're currently waiting on the building permit from the city. So that's pretty soon we'll start holding us up on those two. Be glad to answer any questions you have. Any questions on the board? Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Thank you. Be sure and tell Gallagher's thank you for the ceremony last month. It was a great ceremony and I appreciate y'all providing lunch for all the workers on site. I know they, they all seem to enjoy it. So it was a great day, great event. Moving on to item number seven, public forum. At this time, nobody signed up to, to speak. Then we'll move on to consent agenda, item number eight. Under that, we have 8A, it's approved the minutes from December 5th meeting. 8B, approve the budget amendment. Make uh, approve these separately or collectively. Do I have a motion from the board? I move that the board collectively approve the consent agenda as presented. I have a motion from Ms. Green, do have a second? Second. Ms. Bateman? I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And I hear none. Next is item number nine, closed session. Tonight, 9A is deliberation regarding employment or professional contract personnel pursuant to Texas Government Code 551074, personnel matters. 9B, deliberation regarding pursuit of sanctions for educator abandonment of contract, uh, Government Code 551074. 9C, consultation with attorney. Texas Government Code 551071. 
uh, no action on item D. Moving on to item E there, deliberation regarding the superintendent's summary evaluation and contract pursuant to Texas Government Code 551074 personnel matters. At this time, it's now 811 and we'll be in closed session. It's now 919 and we'll call us back into open session, taking on, uh, moving on to item 10. A consideration and possible approval regarding the employment of professional contract personnel. Do I have a motion from the board? Mr. Ferris, I move that we approve the employment of professional contract personnel as presented. Thank you, Ms. Dobbs. Do have a second? Second. Ms. Burkhalter? All in favor, aye. say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I hear none. Item 11. Consideration possible action pursuant to sanctions for educator abandonment of contract. Do I have a motion from the board? Mr. Ferris, I move that the board find that no good cause existed for Amanda Leal to abandon her contract with Pointing ISD and authorize the superintendent to take necessary action to report the employee to TEA for review. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Bateman, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? I hear none. Then uh, item 12 would be consideration and possible action regarding the superintendent's summit of evaluation and extension for modification of superintendent's term contract. Do I have a motion from the board? President Ferris, I move to amend the superintendent's employment contract as discussed in closed session, including the extended current contract term authorized the board president to negotiate and execute and amend the contract as discussed in closed session. Thank you, Mr. Regan. Do I have a second? Second. Ms. Green? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? And I hear none. Thank you. Thank you all very much for that. And then please take note there in your announcements uh, in February. The date should be changed to February the 9th. Uh, at this time, uh, due to Coffin County Day, we made that adjustment. And then Monday, February 27th will be the one before spring break. Yes, sir. February 27th will be our March regular meeting. Okay. So make note on your personal calendars. Uh, everybody double check those dates right now. Two meetings in February. Does that work for everybody? I know Ms. Dobbs has one conflict. Anybody else? Two meetings in February, the 9th and 27th? I will be able to be at the 9th. Sorry. Okay. I can be at my meeting. Okay. Well, we'll figure it out. Okay, we'll leave that for now, and then we'll uh, be in touch if anything else comes up. Uh, but appreciate that. Anything else anybody else has to share before we adjourn? Thank you all for all the treats. Chief Sanders, we know you're responsible for all of it. We thank you for staying late and taking care of us, keeping us safe. It is now 922. We'll call this meeting adjourned.